Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And before I get this video started, I just wanted to make a shout out to Noel Torres for providing me these links. Definitely appreciate it. So PC Magazine released this article today and they're a very credible source. So as you can see at the top, T-Mobile's next speed boost requires a new phone. So none of T-Mobile's current lineup on phones, the S7, S7 Edge iPhones, none of those phones can take advantage of this new speed boost, which is LTE U unlicensed spectrum on the five gigahertz Wi-Fi channels that will enhance capacity. None of the current phones can take advantage of it. Now the article says that T-Mobile may be able to offer it on the Snapdragon 835 with the upcoming Snap Samsung Galaxy S8, but we will know more in the next coming days and weeks to find out if that phone will support this band of LTE. So the FCC, according to uh, T-Mobile's newsroom, finally approved that the carrier may start deploying unlicensed spectrum on the network. So T-Mobile said that by spring, they can roll, they will have LTE U up on the network. Now the thing where I got to do some more research, I do not know if it'll be a nationwide rollout where they have this spectrum available in, in which markets. So I'm going to have to do some more research on that to get back to you guys. So as I explain LTE U, I just want to let you guys know that this this type of spectrum is not this will not be used for coverage this is all about capacity so here we go LTE U works on the 5 gigahertz band which only reaches a few hundred feet from the access point that means T-Mobile has to get really really dense to put this to use in cities and um, <clears throat> in other markets but more than likely this will be used and deployed in buildings such as stadiums, colleges, uh, college campuses, office complexes, hotels, casinos to improve speeds in buildings but only in places that have DAS antennas inside that T-Mobile can apply the spectrum to. And in certain cities maybe like a New York that is really dense that almost has a tower on every block they may be able to integrate this spectrum to help boost capacity as well but it cannot be used for any type of coverage it only goes about two to three hundred feet so that's definitely the only downside to the spectrum but it'll help T-Mobile provide faster speeds in certain areas now with that said what kind of effect it will have on your overall market I would have to do additional research on that I don't know if this will only be used in certain areas or if T-Mobile is really going to get markets so dense that this can just be integrated and used like you would use in the LTE Band 4 or Band 2 on capacity. Because if this is added on the tower and it only reaches maybe two to 300 feet, it's really no use of having it on certain towers because you would connect to it and then as soon as you get out of that area, you wouldn't connect to it again. So... A lot of work and plans for this to be deployed. Also, L L L LAA, Verizon has plans to deploy it, as well as AT&T, and that's unlicensed spectrum. Sprint, you know, so far has shied away from these technologies because it has the most amount of 2.5 spectrum to work with, so they don't need any unlicensed spectrum. So Sprint... As many of you mentioned, they could be a very big player going into 5G because they have that type of spectrum. They call it a gold mine, and they have the most of it nationwide. So Sprint, even though they haven't completed their 4G LTE yet, they could be trying to already go into 5G and be a major player in that field, which with their strategy, they might, but they lack the cash. They need a big influx of cash, and, you know, like one of you guys comment, let the merger talks begin. T-Mobile probably wouldn't need any help from another carrier going forward. They will be strong enough. 600 megahertz, LTE unlicensed spectrum, more towers, more small cells. 
T-Mobile would be good going forward. But it's it will definitely be interesting to see what happens this year. I don't think anything's going to happen this year. I think more towards next year we will start seeing some uh, some uh, mergers happen. They might talk about them this year, but it'll, it'll take some time to break it down and see who gets what. So definitely interesting to see this that has finally got approved. I wasn't expecting this to get approved till early 18, mid 18, but it looks like it already has been approved. So definitely great to see. So I just wanted to explain this to you guys a bit. We got some more info on it and over the few days, these next few days, as more info comes out, I will definitely keep you guys updated as well. Definitely leave your comments in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think. Could this be a great asset to T-Mobile's network or do they really, really have to densify like crazy to make use of this spectrum? I mean, as you can see, it only reaches a few hundred feet from the access point. So that means there would have to be some type of extender or a small cell in between towers to really make use of this and, and make it reach even further. So definitely interesting to see. This is all still new technology. So I will have to do more research to really uh, see what this is all about and what it can really do. It should be about the same as what Sprint's trying to do. So many, many small cells need to be deployed to, to really have an effect on the network. So definitely stay tuned to the channel. I will have more uh, videos coming out for you guys. Also, give these videos a thumbs up. It keeps me motivated. It keeps me going. Make sure you enter the giveaway. It will go live this Friday, and I will pick the winner. Mm -hmm. Like, share, subscribe. And this is Tyrone with Tech Life, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.